my little pupils. How are you doing today? I hope you're having a great time at home. Good. I'll still be taking you on basic science, and I am Mrs. Emmanuel. You're welcome to the second part of this class for this week. Now, remember in the previous class, we talked on the topic plants, which represents the weeds we are considering, okay? The weeds. The plants, particularly, we are talking about the weeds, okay? We define weeds, we make mention of some examples of weeds, and we also stated some importance of weeds, isn't it? Okay, so this is the second part of this class for this week. We are still on the topic plants, sorry, weeds, okay? We are still on the topic weeds. And our specific objective say, at the end of this lesson, I should be able to study the control measures of weeds. That's the first part. And the second one says, state the positive and negative effects of weeds. Okay, so these are some of the objectives we are going to consider in this class. Okay, make sure you pay attention so that you go along with me. Good. So, the first thing we are going to consider is the control measures of weeds. Now, how do we control these weeds? Remember we say they can compete with our crops, isn't it? So, we do not need weeds at that particular time, so we have to do something about it. So, these are some of the things we have to apply in order to control these weeds. So, these are the things we refer to as control measures. The first one on my list is the biological method. The biological method. Now, the biological method simply involves the use of animals to eat up the weeds. Example, the ruminant animals, which I mentioned in the previous class. Example, the goat, the sheep, and the cattle. These are examples of ruminant animals. So, you introduce the animals into the farm in order to do what? To eat up the weeds. Now, remember, before you introduce animal into your farm, it should be the kind of crops that the animal cannot reach, like the oil palm, the cocoa plant, and so on. Okay? You do not in introduce animals like this into uh, the farm where they can eat up crops like uh, cassava. Yeah, okay? You have to introduce them into uh, maybe tree crops, where you plant your tree crops like your oil palm. Okay? So those, that's the first method the use of animals to eat up the or weeds. The first, second one there is the cultural method. The cultural method is simply the use of certain farm practices in order to control weeds. Example, the planting of cover crops. Okay, so an example of the example of cover crops could be things like melon and beans. So they will have to do what to when they grow, they will cover the surface of the soil in order to suppress the weeds. Okay, they will are not allow the weed to grow very fast as they would have done. So in so doing, they have been able to suppress the growth of the weeds. So this is another method of controlling weeds. Then we have the third one, which is the mechanical method. The mechanical method. Simply the use of machine in to weed up the farm, okay? Like the grass mower, you use it to weed the farm, around the farm. Then the next method is the physical method, which is the use of hoe. You can decide to use your hoe, your spade, or maybe matrix to or clear around the crust. So these are some of the methods. Then the last control measure which I have here is the chemical method. The chemical method. Now, this is simply the use of chemicals called herbicides to control or to kill wheat, okay? Are we together? So, the chemical you use to control these weeds are what we call herbicides. Now, let's consider, also consider the good effects of weeds. It doesn't mean because weeds are growing among our plants that they do not have uh, some good uh, part, okay? So, they have advantages, okay, which are what will better us, the good effects of weeds. The first one there is for compost preparation. Now we talked about compost manure in our previous class, isn't it? Okay, when I said that it just has to do with the decay plant and animal materials. Okay, 
So when this wheat decay can save us compost manure, wheat which we can use to grow our crops and make them to yield better. The last one is for feeding livestock, which we make mention of. Okay, remember I said livestock are simply farm animals that feed on these grasses. Okay, example the ruminants like the sheep and the goat. These are some of the uh, examples of livestock which feed on these wheat. Then we have the other one for controlling erosion, which I talked about as an example as the carpet grass, which helps to hold soil particles together in order to prevent uh, the washing away of the surface of the soil by rainwater. Then, as medicine, yes, we talked about that, that some plants or some weeds are used as medicine, okay? Example, the cedar. The same weed I talked about, which is the whole of what I talked about. We have so many other kinds of weeds which are also used as medicine, apart from the same weed which we met measuring in the previous class. Okay? Now, what are the bad effects of these weeds? The first one there is that weeds, wheat reduces the yield of crops. Of course, they compete with crops, so they will not allow the crops to grow well. Okay, in, and so on. And as time goes on, what happens? They will reduce the yield of the crop. The crop will have a low yield instead of producing more fruit at the end of the day to produce low because the nutrients have been taken away by weeds. Okay, now number two point says it competes with crops for nutrients, for with crops for nutrients, sunlight, water, and space. Of course. Oh, we have mentioned that the nutrients are simply the food that the plants take in by the manure is an example of plant nutrient, okay? Even the fertilizer is an example of plant nutrient. So let's say for instance that uh, let's say for instance maybe we have just a small a little plate of food for like five people. Now tell me if everybody's eating from that plate, what happens? Everybody will be struggling to feed its stomach, isn't it? So that's exactly what happens between the weed and the crab. So, and the crops, the wheat have, uh, they have a way of growing faster than the crops. So if you allow wheat, what will happen is that they will feed up, uh, they will use up the nutrients and the plants will end up with nothing. Then we have the sunlight, which helps the plants to make its food through the process of photosynthesis, okay? So imagine the wheat over, overwhelming the crops, what happens? They will take up uh, the whole process of food making and the crop will be left aside. Then we have water, remember? Every living thing needs water to survive, including the crops. Okay? So, we also compete for water, then space, because everybody needs a space to grow, isn't it? So, even the weeds and the plants also compete for space. So, the next one there is that it says that the top point serves as home for pests and disease organisms. What do we mean by this? So if you allow weeds to grow in your farm and not stand in your crops, they will help to house pests like grasshopper, which are we can eat all our crops, like cricket, okay? They will help to serve as house for those pests. Okay, so it's better for you to remove them. The next point that says it reduces the quality of crops. Of course, this place will render our crops uh, unattractive and unmarketable, okay? They will render our fruits and vegetables unattractive and unmarketable. So as such, the quality is being reduced. If such crops are taken to the market, it will not move market because people will like to go for the attractive ones and leave the ones that are being affected by pests, okay? So, it is bad to allow weeds to grow alongside the crops. Now, the next one is that some weeds are poisonous to man and animals when eaten. Okay? Now, let's say, for instance, when you're introducing your uh, livestock into the farm to feed up the, <coughs> to feed up the, to feed up with, uh, the weeds, okay? They may end up uh, eating the poisonous weeds, okay? Which can, in turn, cause harm to them, isn't it? So, it's better for you to weed your farm, or that to do what? To prevent these, uh, these poisonous weeds from affecting your animals. Now, 
I will leave you with this little assignment to go home and do it. I will also encourage you to read more on what we have done so far. Remember, I asked you to go through the internet so that you can see some of the, uh, the images of these books, what they look like, okay? See you in the next class, okay? And that will be by next week. Have a nice weekend. Bye.